This is WBSM On Demand. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to the program. I'm Chris McCarthy. If you'd like to join me, you can at 508-996-0500. So I had been telling you, and now I'm going to deliver, the editorial this weekend from the Wall Street Journal. Um, The editorial page is fantastic for the Wall Street Journal. That's my opinion. Um, It's also their opinion, right? Um, And... They had a really interesting editorial. Now, if you're a regular listener to this program, this will make sense to you. If you're new to the program, stick around. The Holocaust that happened in Israel, October 7th, right? Remember that? The terrorists uh, invaded and they murdered women, children, men. They committed horrible sexual atrocities, kidnapped. To this day, there are hostages in the tunnels under Gaza, unless they've been smuggled to Iran. And some of them are Americans, okay? We have American hostages being held by Hamas, which is a tool of the mullahs in Iran, okay? Now, shortly after the terrorist attack on October 7th. You had a major pro-Hamas demonstration on the streets of New Bedford, okay? Carlos Felix, still the best video video journalist in the greater New Bedford area, um, took a videotape of it for those of us who were not able to make it, right? But boy, there were a lot of people Chanting from the river to the sea. That is an anti-Semitic chant, okay? The mayor was flown to Israel um, to see for first hand, okay? John Mitchell went to Israel. He came back and he told us what he'd seen. And it really, it was a really um, interesting broadcast. And I appreciate that the mayor did it. Um, at great personal risk, let's face it. Um, anyway, the demonstration that happened in New Bedford, the anti-Semitic pro-Hamas demonstration, went right down Union Street. They were holding signs. Why did they pick that location? To influence Congressman Keating, who serves on armed services and foreign affairs. He's a very powerful man in Congress. And the demonstration was organized by members of the Democrat Party, the city committee of New Bedford. We have a videotape of it, thanks to Carlos Felix. Who was there? Okay. Lisa Lemieux. Lisa Lemieux is a big deal in the labor movement. She works for SEIU. She's on the labor council, all of that. I've had her as a guest. Never again, but I've had her as a guest. She is on the Democrat State Committee. Okay. She's also an appointee of John Mitchell on the WIB board, the Workforce Development Board, which takes money and distributes it. It is a, the board is appointed by the mayor of New Bedford, but it is for the entire region, Freetown, Lake Villa, Cushnet, Dartmouth, right? All of you. In the sound of my voice, um, workforce development. Joe Lopes from the city council is the CEO of that board. The board is appointed by the mayor. Lisa Lemieux is on that board. Lisa Lemieux also organized the pro-Hamas demonstration. We have a video of it. Um, who else was there? Well, you had the former Ward 4 city councilor. Um, she works for Vineyard Wind now, and she's their community relations person, Dana Ribeiro, okay? Dana Ribeiro is a radical left-wing Democrat. Everyone who was there that day was a radical left-wing Democrat. Not like many of you who are Democrats for good reasons, historic reasons, 
<clears throat> reasons that no longer, quite frankly, exist, um, the party has been captured by extremists who are pro-Hamas, okay? Lisa Lemieux, that's important. Um, an appointee of John Mitchell on the web board. Um, she organized a demonstration. She was down there. You had... Um, other Democrats. You had <clears throat> the former head of the Mass Teachers Association. She was down there. She was one of the speakers. So here's what the Wall Street Journal had to say about our local Democrats. Well, it's it's a, it's a <clears throat> an editorial geared towards all protesters, but I think it's important, while it's a national publication, to point out the local connection to their their opinions, right? It talks about how Al-Qaeda and Iran salute the U.S. campus protesters and all protesters, okay? So it points out that Osama bin Laden isn't, isn't available to deliver his message himself of congratulations. But we know how proud he would have been. Pass on the word from Al-Qaeda to the the um, they wear a a, a um, like a, a ceremonial headdress. I saw it the other day because a local Democrat activist who was addressing the city council was wearing it. I can't really pronounce it. Um, Kafali, I don't know. But basically, um, Eric Andre, who's run for office, he's involved with the Democrat Party, he's involved with the Coalition for Social Justice. He spoke the other night. The thing I like about Eric Andrade, you don't have to wa- wonder what he's thinking. He's proud of it. He'll tell you. <clears throat> he's in favor of, quite frankly, the destruction of the state of Israel. And he was out there with the other socialists marching down Union Street with Lisa Lemieux and other people chanting, to the river, to the sea, right? That is an anti-Semitic chant. The mayor has explained that to us. He was in Israel. And he also told us that that those are the protests that the Israelis are concerned about, that the Democrat activists, the campus activists, all which are addressed in this Wall Street Journal editorial, saying that the Iranian mullah sends a shout-out to all of the Western protesters on the streets and the campuses, like the demonstrators, Lisa Lemieux, Eric Andrade, Dana Ribeiro, and other Democrats, the pro-Hamas wing of the Democrat Party, of which John Mitchell appointed Lisa Lemieux. <clears throat> now, it was before the demonstration. But, you know, since that demonstration... The Democrat City Committee of New Bedford has elected her as one of the chair people, the co-chairs, along with other people from the and some good God-fearing patriotic Americans like Bob Bromley. He's on the committee. Scott Lang is on the Democrat City Committee. He's on the Ward 5 Committee. He was the highest vote getter in the city of New Bedford in the Democrat primary, um, along with John Mitchell and um, Tony Cabral. In other words, you've got a lot of local Democrats, but you've also got a lot of people who support Hamas on the city committee. They held a demonstration. It, it was noticed by the Mullers in Iran, and the, the Politburo of Hamas, who congratulated and celebrated their win by getting those demonstrators out on the streets of New Bedford and on the streets of New York, the streets of Boston, in on the college campuses at Harvard, Yale, Columbia. You've seen it on the news. You know outside of the news? The Politburo of Hamas and the Iranian mullahs. So, um... Good job, New Bedford Democrats. Good job. And again, I know that many of you Democrats are outraged by the fact that 
people are taking your party in that direction, but they are. So if I was you, I would look to maybe crossing over the aisle or becoming unenrolled, well, becoming unenrolled and looking to elect maybe some unenrolled or even, God forbid, some Republicans to the legislature um, and have them represent you. You've got some choices this year. Um, you got Jesse St. Chalais. He's running to represent part of Ward 1, part of Akushnet, part all of Westport, part of Fort Here is ads running here. Jesse St. Chalais, you go to his website, Jesse for you. Give a young man a chance. <clears throat> Take a look at him, all right? Um, here in Fairhaven, we've got two Republican candidates running really hard uh, for the nomination. You've got Joe Pyers. Uh, who's on the Rochester School Committee, Old Rochester School Committee. You've got Bob McConnell out this weekend campaigning really hard for, to get your nominate to get the nomination of the Republican Party, which if you're unenrolled <clears throat> and you live in Fairhaven, Rochester, Marion, Mattapoiset, part of Ward 1, part of a Cushnet, you can take a ballot in the Republican primary and vote for one of those men and then see them through till November. Now, You've got, a, I think, a very fine gentleman, but um, Mark Sylvia, <clears throat> he's running to be the Democrat nominee. I don't know how he stands up to the Hamas wing, <clears throat> but he received the endorsement of Bill Strauss, the Democrat. So, I, I mean, I think Mark gets that endorsement, but it's kind of a double-edged sword, right? I mean, Bill Strauss is the one who voted. He really was the architect for illegal aliens driver's licenses. But anyway, so folks, we're going to take a couple phone calls here. Good morning. Thanks for holding. Hey, good morning. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing well. How are you, my friend? No, not bad. You know, this is nothing new with the communists. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, Dana Ribeiro and uh, Lisa Lemieux and uh, Shana Ribeiro, I'm sorry, Shane uh, Burgo. Yes. They want to spread cultural Marxism, no different than in the 60s with the weather underground. Right. And uh, brainwashing uh, the students that called themselves at the time students for a democratic society. Thirteen of them went to jail for bomb threats uh, and anarchists. They went to jail. This is nothing new. And this would explain why our city is where it's at. It's uh, a socialist uh, experiment test tube. And it was Joseph Stalin who said that socialism is the doorway to communism, and that's where we're at. We have city councils that don't want to, they come and go as they please. Uh, they choose uh, what they, they want to show up at uh, city council chambers. A lot of the time they do it online through Zoom meetings that n- many of us don't have, uh, you know, social media or Internet, like right. myself. I don't have that. And, uh, you know, this is the same thing. New Bedford, this is nothing new. Uh, the K, it caters to the nine nonprofits and 501c3s. If it's about rehab clinics and sober houses, museums and theaters, and uh, taking an old building uh, like the old Capitol uh, Theater, uh, abandoned for many, many years and dumping millions of dollars, and this is economic development. If this was cannab- more cannabis dispensaries, they'd be city councils be tripping over themselves to get one um, multiple open in each corner. Uh, this is where we're at. This is uh, LBJ's uh, war on poverty that started in 1964, and it's, uh, it, it's just the industrial welfare complex uh, that with these housing units, you got private owners that are making a lot of money, and the city's on the taxpayer to keep the properties uh, maintained and all of that using city services through HUD. This is what this is all, all about. We got a ballooning budget. The mayor waits until the last minute. His tricks, supplemental uh, add-ons at the last minute so it can carry over to the next year. Uh, we're, we're in disarray, not to mention twelve to 15,000 uh, legal aliens, foreign nationals that live here. And Helen uh, Hughes of the, the Immigration Assistance Senate said they're coming here every day, many without parents. It's costing us about $22,000 per student. That's what I heard on the broadcast. Uh, it's costing the state $22,000 per student. We got all of these students coming in to our school budget, which is ballooning and ballooning. And what do we hear? 
Oh, well, the city employees want COLAs. They want a cost of living increase when many in the private sector haven't seen a raise in years, but yet their taxes are going up and us taxpayers are paying 80% of the health insurance while the employee is 20%. But the mayor would tell you, we're going to get the best talent. We have to spend more money. Where are all the pot of gold? I've been looking for pots of gold. I haven't found any. I see a lot of weeds and overgrown grass, especially at the uh, Hetland ice skating rink. I mean, it's wild vegetation over there. I don't know if you notice when you drive by there. It's embarrassing. And our children play hockey over there. It looks like an abandoned building. It's great. I haven't been by there in a while. Thanks for the call, my friend, as always. That gentleman's spot on. It is communist, okay? It is um, old, old line communists have made, look, I read the communist per periodicals, okay? They're out there. You can read them too. They're easy to find. They're all free. Again, they tell you what they want to do. It's right out, they're right out in the open. Some of them locally are conspiratorially, right? They operate in the shadows and they don't want you to know who they are or what they really believe. But by and large, the Communist Party is out in the open and you can see that they are aligned with Hamas and they're organizing many of these demonstrations. They brag about it. That's how I can anticipate what's coming down the line for them because I read their periodicals. It's called the People's Weekly World. Used to have a local guy, a UMass professor, who wrote for them. That's why the paper was locally available all the time. The hard copy, the paper copy. Um, you can read it online for free. People's Weekly World. Google it. You can read it. And you'll see um, what they're planning and how they're all aligned with Hamas. That gentleman is absolutely correct. Folks, I've been a little long. Stick around. We're going to be right back. Listen, it's hard to be a rambling man without a good automobile, right? Um, so you got to keep your automobile up to date. You got to keep it serviced. You got to keep the fluids right for the seasons. You got to get your car ready for the summer. And I bet some of you still do. Go to Mac Auto Sales, 188 Rivet Street, New Bedford. They repair all makes and models. So if you need to get your car ready for the summer or you're just looking for someone new to work on your car, call Mac Auto Sales and Repair, 508 56562. They're open weekdays, 9 to 5. Now, if you have a foreign car that needs repair, Mac Auto Sales specializes in foreign car servicing. Ask about their aftermarket accessories and their quality used cars that they have for sale. If they don't have it on the lot, go in and ask them. Mac Auto Sales, I bet they can find it for you. Tell them Chris McCarthy sent you. So, folks, I'm going to dip back into the city council meeting. This is from late last week. Um, again, we'll do that because um, sometimes... They have, they have the meet, not sometimes, they have the meetings on Thursday night. Then by Friday, it, it's gone, right? In other words, if we start paying attention to it on Friday, then we go into the long weekend, you won't hear it. So I'm going to play. Some people have been talking about the, the trade zone, right? The foreign trade zone. Why aren't they using that? So Ian Abra had some questions about that. And I do think it's worth um, playing that for you. Um, stick around. Let's listen to Counselor Ian Abreu, a veteran counselor at this point in his career talking about the free trade zone out at the airport and what's haven't what really hasn't been going on and the airport um director scott um answering his question airport subcommittee two weeks ago and I just wanted to kind of circle back on that for those who I hear that weren't on that committee and even for the general public um, I think and well I know as you know and as I believe everyone knows in this room New Bedford is designated um, is a designated foreign trade zone grantee I think that's an underutilized asset for us we talk about the port, but we don't talk about utilizing that asset really to its full potential as it relates to the airport. Can you talk a little bit about that and how we can really get that to the next level? Because that obviously is going to, um, you know, it, the foreign trade zone um, offers a unique tax abatement opportunity that's recommended to uh, any company that currently imports or plans to import directly or indirectly. Um, through purchases from importers in this area. So I think that's huge, but we don't talk about that enough, I don't think. So um, can you kind of elaborate a little bit about that? Sure. So long before my time, uh, 1980s, I believe, they created a tax relief zone 
down at the port with a causeway that led through New Bedford to the airport, where you would defer tax when you landed in the port of New Bedford through the airport, and you would pay tax wherever you ended up. And that tax was deferred, so you didn't have to pay it here, you paid it where you went. Initially, that was designed at um, FedEx, UPS, and a lot of those businesses. Well, FedEx, UPS are operating out of Logan Airport. Amazon opened a warehouse in Taunton specifically to not have to fly things around to be able to truck them through. And everybody kind of forgot about it after that. We've looked at the seaport a few times, more than a few times, probably about seven times to see about fish flights, but we don't really have access to who else comes into the port and what else they bring in. I know there are other ships, other, I mean, we're the number one fish port, but there are other ships that come in with containers that ship things in and out. And I'm not sure if they're aware of our tax status and how that could be utilized Don't and done. Don't you think that's his job? And that would be something that would be worth investigating to try to utilize that to ship things out. I think so. I think this would be something where our New Bedford EDC, the Chamber of Commerce, I think you, you, your, your, your team, your commission, I think it'd be, have to be a collaborative effort. I mean, I, I don't so, know. I so mean, there's, there's, I have to tell you, I, and I know this is, may come off sounding unfair, but I, I wasn't really impressed with this airport director. Um, too much. Again, testifying in front of the city council is not everybody's strong suit, all right? So, um, but he had a lot of, I don't know, is basically what his answer was to a lot of questions. And I, and I get it. Um, because what he's asking for is ridiculous, really. He wants more money from the city taxpayers. And the best he's going to promise is to make it really unbearable for the residents up there in the North End. Uh, really quick on budget information. This is Ryan uh, can Pereira. Can I a breakdown of the $14,700 in the contractual services emailed to us, please? So that one line item of the $14,700. So here, here is, and this is, um, Ryan's not the only one who does it, but um, Joe has done it as well, but if you know you're going to ask the guy a question, that he's going to have to email you the answer, why don't you email him the question before? And so he can come prepared to ask it. Because if he sends you the email later, um, you're never going to discuss it. Or you, you're unlikely to discuss it in a public setting on the city council floor where, where those of us who are paying attention can, can hear it, right? So my problem is that it's very hard for a person to anticipate your questions, right? That way, if you know you're going to ask him a question that he needs a follow-up, send, send him the question ahead of time. Get it to us, and I appreciate that. Can I see a breakdown three years prior to COVID, the three years immediately prior to All these to questions COVID could, should have been in texted or sent by email to the director and of the, the airport. the past three years, expense income. Six before years he came to testify. So he could submit the, the questions, yes. the answers for the yes. record. Three, three full years right. prior to COVID, yeah. then, then, the, then the immediate past three fiscal years. Yeah, Perfect. The, the initial part of it is in our business plan that's on our website. Yep. And we can but if you don't mind just forwarding that to yeah, us. Yeah, but we'll put it together so yeah. we'll make it Sweet. easy. Yeah. So again, yeah. these that questions should have been yeah. sent in Thank advance you. of the hearing. Thank you, Council Pereira. Anybody else? Seeing none, thank you, Scott, for coming. Anybody else? Did, no? Okay. Thank you. I do apologize. So, again, folks, that is the director of the airport. Again, I, I think that, um, again, it's not testifying from the city council, not everybody's strong suit. And you had a lot of good questions up there. But again, if you know you're going to ask a question that requires a follow-up, why don't you send them that question in advance of the hearing so they can show up prepared? Um, because 
unless you don't want the answer on the record, right? And that's not the department. I'm talking about the city councilors because it doesn't really do the public any good, which is what these hearings are for. Um, if they're going to send you an email after the hearing, right? And by the way, the budget cut night, when the night that they make the cuts is coming up. So if you want the meeting, if you want, the, if you know the information, it's going to be sent to you later, right? What if the guy doesn't send it to you before you have to formulate an opinion? They get it through the budget. In other words, this isn't a very good strategy by some of the city councilors to ask questions that they require follow-up. But the, the clock is, is ticking, right? So if you'd sent them the information, the questions that require the information earlier than the meeting, then they would send it to you in a timely manner, okay? And you'd be able to use it to make an informed decision about the cuts. Unless, of course, this is all just a charade. What do you think, folks? What do you think? Um, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Well, good morning. Thank you for holding. Yeah, good morning. Hi, Chris. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you, my friend? <clears throat> good. Good, thank you. Scott comes in here. If, if I may, I just want to just remind everyone that I have a uh, not in uh, Scott, your phone's breaking up. You gotta, you gotta stand okay. still or get a better phone. Something. All right, sorry about that. Uh, I, I, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. And I have a North End uh, Association meeting tonight. Uh, neighborhood meeting, six thirty at the uh, Global Charter Schools, uh, and that's at that six thirty again at the at the Global Global Charter Learning. Yeah. <clears throat> That's a, you do a lot. You do great stuff up there in the North End, Scott. I appreciate everything you do up there for that neighborhood. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, you know, as you know, we're trying to get one, one going too, so I'm not going to leave with that. So if anybody you know wants to end up there, you can get in touch with me, and I can uh, show them how it's done and stuff. You know. Yeah, well, well, and, and I think Leo's doing a good job up there in Ward 1 on his own. Scott, I think you ought to concentrate on Ward 2. I think you're doing a great job down there. Uh, someone's got to do it. And um, so... Um, Tonight, I, I guess what he's saying is they're going to have a meeting at the Global uh, Learning Charter School, um, which is very generous to allow uh, the, the residents to use that for a neighborhood meeting. So tonight, if you live in Ward 2, um, you ought to head over. Scott Pemberton's holding a meeting for Ward 2 Neighborhood Association um, up there. Long defunct, really. So it's about time um, someone's really doing work, and they're, they're in World, Ward 2. Um so um, we appreciate Scott calling in, even if it, even if the phone was um, a problem. Um, again, if you're calling from a cell phone <clears throat> and you want to um, communicate with me, um, try to um, have a good line or try to stand still, not driving. I don't know what the hell he was doing, but um, either that or just call from a landline. If you have one, right, put a dime in a pay phone. They don't, they're not, they, they don't click out. Right. Um, so anyway, are there any pay phones left? I bet you they, there are a couple probably, right? There's a couple out there. Uh, 508-996-0500 so I can get on the program. We have been talking about the city budget. <clears throat> now, what's amazing, and I don't think I'm going to have an opportunity to get to it, but we'll talk about it tomorrow. Maria Siesta asleep at the switch. I have to tell you something. I doubt she read the report generated on the election by the mayor's um, lawyers um, on what happened, what didn't happen on Super Tuesday when there were no ballots in Ward 1 for Republicans and then they ran out of ballots and then machines kept breaking down and it was just a lot of problems, right? So on Thursday night, Manny DeBrito came in for his hearing <clears throat> on his budget. And look, Manny tries, certainly tries. Um, you should have seen Maria Giesta. Maria Siesta, sleep at the switch. 
fawning over him. She literally said, what a great, amazing job he does. And if she could, she'd give him more money. Maria Fiesta, a party on the taxpayer's dime. She act, listen, I, there's no way, because we know she doesn't read much anyway, that she read the mayor's report, okay? Because it came out on Wednesday. Maria Fiesta, doesn't, there's no way she read through that entire report, as I did, um, in time for Thursday night's budget hearings. Because she actually said to Banny DeBrito, I wish I could give you more money. That's what she thinks of you, the taxpayers. Now, look, like I said, Manny does well. He makes $92,000 a year to barely work a couple times a year. And when he's supposed to work, he obviously doesn't take it seriously, but he tries. And he does well. $92,000 a year plus a pension and full health insurance vacation. He's got a better deal than you do. Look. Maria Giesta, I have the clip. She said, I wish I could give you more money. This is Manny DeBrito, who makes $92,000 a year, plus vacations, plus a pension, and full health benefits. You don't have that. That's like three times, it's at least double what a starting police officer makes, okay? Maria Siesta, sleep at the switch, said she wants to give him more of your money. She wishes she could, but she can't. I was stunned. She thinks Manny's doing a great job. Nobody thinks that. Nobody does. Trust me, I know some of his family members. They don't think it either. They love him, obviously. But they recognize there's a problem. Everyone recognizes it. The mayor had to send lawyers to investigate. There's a report. No way Maria Siesta or Sleep at the Switch read that report. Otherwise, she wouldn't have gone on the record and made another public fool of herself. She wishes she could give a man who's paid $92,000 a year plus vacation time and a full health insurance plan and a retirement package, more money. How much more does Maria Fiesta, Maria Fiesta, a party on the taxpayer's dime, want to give to her buddy, Manny DeBrito? She's already making, if you add the benefits up, over 100, it's a six-figure job. She wants to give him more money. We got some people on hold. Good morning. Thanks for calling. Good morning, Chris. How are uh, you doing? Pretty, pretty, yeah, I'm good, thank you. Uh, it's pretty sad. Just yes. the whole situation sad. But um, as far as the airport goes, yes. um, could we not just say, listen, Massport, you guys take it. We don't want anything to do with it. You take it. You run it. You pay for it. Um, how, what, what impact would that have to the city? So... Here's the thing. I know that Ian Abreu has had meetings um, with people to talk about that and is learning more about it. I don't know what the full impact of it yet. And again, I I know that Ian Abreu is exploring that. And so um, I'm I'm read in partially on what's, you know, been discussed, what he's learning. But again, it's an ongoing learning process and that's a healthy way to do it so yeah. it, that that idea is out there um yeah. what the impact of the city would be they took it over in worcester and they, as you i'm sure you're aware and they're doing yeah. a good job with that airport out there do you do lose local control um so that impact but um i think it would be less of a burden on the taxpayers um, yeah. It would be a burden on the state taxpayers, not so much the city taxpayers. But that idea um, is being explored, at least by any. Is there any? Is there any room to truly expand it? I into don't believe a, there is. Then, then I, to me, at this point, 
I would say either Massport, you take it. If you don't want it, guess what? We're going to close it and we're going to sell the land off and put businesses there or housing. Do something because, you know, it, it's great that wealthy people from Nantucket can fly into New Bedford. Right. But guess what? The, the guy trying to pay his rent on North Front Street, is, you know, it, it's not helping him. Right. So uh, I just, uh, you know, we can't have it all. We, we can't. Can't afford it anymore. So uh, As Sean you, Oliver you. said, oh, oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. As Sean Oliver said during the meeting. Some things, in a, in a tight budget, some things have to go the way of the dodo. Um, the alternative, by the way, is to build it up, as the airport director said, and make it like Warwick. Well, if you've been to Warwick Airport, you know, we call it, some people call it Providence Airport, whatever. But it's, it's in Warwick. And I wouldn't want to live near that airport. So if I live up there in, anywhere in the city, quite frankly... Even in Fairhaven, as I said, the Jets come over the house. I don't mind it um, because they're rare at this moment. But I wouldn't like it if they were all the time. And um, I kind of like seeing the Cape Air planes go over. In fact, yesterday when we were out on the um, on the boat, um, there were planes got flying over the ocean, and that's pretty cool. Um, but I wouldn't want them flying over. Look, I went out with a girl for years from Winthrop, and... You'd have to, like, completely stop talking in the house when those planes went over to go to Logan. Or if she was on the phone, to me, she'd have to say, hold on. I mean, you couldn't talk on the phone when the planes fly over. So I wouldn't want to live that. In other words, um, you're kind of damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Because otherwise, you're going to keep subsidizing with your taxpayer dollars. If you want to make it revenue positive, you're going to have to put up with a lot of unattractive noise flying over your house, which is supposed to be a place of peace, right? You want to be, have peace and quiet in your home, right? I don't think, it's one or the other. You're going to have to keep subsidizing it to underperform. If to, to turn a profit, it's going to have to overperform, which is going to it's Catch-22, really. Folks, stick around. We'll be right back. will be Sean Oliver asking the airport director some questions. Again, I think this is, Sean's, this is Sean's first budget, and I'm pretty impressed with what we're seeing so far. Sorry, America. Sorry, America. And I am absolutely, uh, you know, uh, I understand that you're short-staffed. Uh, my colleague from War Two said it. We hear about other uh, airports like Hyannis we just heard. The fact is they have more revenue coming in with carriers. They need more employees as well, correct? Is yes. that a fair assessment? And, and they're modernized, which okay. we have not done because the city of Bedford pins its hat on enterprise fund. If you can't afford to do it, it can't be done. And when we're underfunded... In other words, he wants more expand. money from you. <laughs> so Enterprise expand. fund is a closed fund. The airport you... is a, in as seen as a um, playground for the, for the rich. Not necessarily a bad thing. Is there a way that it would ever turn a profit? Do you see a, 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 a day where you come here and it's level funded? Yes. You do? I do. And that is solely on this, that airport... Remodel? Solely on the remodel. Because and the, air, the runway's not getting any bigger, right? So we're either waiting for a bigger runway for more people to come or advances in aviation. Aside from that, we're not getting anybody else here, correct? So there are plenty of airlines that can use us at the but runway. But they're not right now, have. correct? Correct. Okay. Because of the 